الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وعلى ابن عمه وأخيه ووزيره علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا واجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وخدامه وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن يريدوا أن يخدعوك فإن حسبك الله فإن حسبك الله هو الذي أيدك بنصره وبالمؤمنين وألف بين قلوبهم لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بينهم ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم إنه عزيز حكيم صدق الله العلي العظيم Tonight is the second night من هنا of the night of destiny the night of قدر the holiest throughout the whole year the night where the Quran says ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر and two nights ago I mentioned that the scholars say these nights are related to each other the first night of them the night of the, the eve of the 19th is ليلة التقدير it is the night of assessment and evaluation for how much we deserve how much mercy and a blessing we deserve the second night tonight, the eve of the 21st, is Laylatul Ibram, the ratification, the endorsement of, had, of how much we deserve. And the final night, which is Saturday night, the eve of the 23rd, is Laylatul Imda, the night of the signature, when all these decisions that have been made on our behalf are finalized and determined and God says in the Holy Quran, Fiha Yufsal. Yufsal means it will be determined completely and finally. Fiha Yufsalu Kullu Amrin Hakim. Every important decision for you, your health, your income, your happiness, your journey in this life is going to be determined on the eve of the 23rd. One of the most important a'mal of this night is istighfar, seeking repentance and getting closer to God. The hadith says, من كثرت همومه فعليه بالاستغفار. Someone who's suffering from anxiety, from worries, someone who, who worries about his family, his job, his health, his situation, فَعَلَيْهِ بِالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ When you have stress, when you are under pressure, under stress, then the solution, the remedy for that is the prayers, is to get closer to God. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ The real remedy, the real healing, the real medicine is when we remember God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is when we go back to Him, is when we have the guts, to say to God, God, I'm sorry for what, for what I have done to myself and others. I'm sorry for hurting myself so many times in so many situations. I'm sorry for breaking your law. I'm sorry for violating the sanctity of your law and your religion and your faith. I'm sorry for what I have done to others, the abuse I have done to other people around me. This is the night of istighfar, my friends. 
This is the night where we seek sincere, sincere sorry and sincere repentance. And also the hadith says, Man abta'a rizquhu fa'alayhi bil istighfar. Abta'a rizquh, your sustenance slows down. The business slows down. Another solution for that is also istighfar. Is to repent, to go to God. Go back to Him and try to fix your relationship with God. That will increase your income, increase your sustenance. That will make you better off. That will bring you real peace and real happiness and real stability. So this night is the night of istighfar. There are two reasons for sustenance. One is external. You have to get up and go and find a job and work hard. But the second reason is spiritual, equally important. One of the reasons for these nights of Qadr is to allocate for you your sustenance. And God would look at your heart and look at your intention. And he will examine them. If you have good intention, if you have good heart, if you have good relationship with him, if you carry goodness in your heart and your conscience, Definitely God is going to allocate more sustenance for you in this night. The other amal of this night and the night after it, which is Saturday the 23rd, is dua. What is the meaning of the dua? We have been told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, The best deeds that God wants to see here on earth among the community of the people is to ask him, is to speak to him. Ask him. God is generous. Do not be quiet. Though God knows about what goes in your heart, but he wants you to say it. He wants you to confess to this. He wants you to share this with him. He wants to hear your voice. Yes. God says sometimes I delay the response because I love to hear the beautiful voice of my true servant, Abdi al-Mu'min. I love to hear his voice, her voice. If I give them immediately, they will stop. They would not call upon me. They would not remember me because their mission is accomplished. Their needs have been fulfilled. They would not come back to me. So I delay it. I delay it on purpose so they keep calling on me every night. Every night. And you should never give up on God. You may give up on any person. You may give up your hope and your trust on any person. But not in God. Don't give up on God. God loves to hear your voice. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي and tonight is the night of praying not only for yourself. Praying, begin with your parents, the closest people to your heart. The most people who put their energy and their effort to raise you and protect you are your parents. So begin with them. They took care of me. They raised me. They were happy when I was happy. They were sad when I was sad. They stood with me. They were loyal to me. They didn't abandon me. So God bestow mercy on my parents. And then pray for your family members. You have cousins. You have uncles and aunts. You have extended family members. You have people that you might not remember them throughout the whole year. Tonight and Saturday night, try to remember those people. Remember anyone who did a favor for you. They did a favor for us. Whether they are teachers, mentors, friends, family members, remember them. Remember those who are sick. Many people were with us. In these nights, in the previous years, some of them now are suffering. Some of them are in the hospitals. Some of them are waiting for surgeries. Some of them cannot make it. Remember them. 
Pray for their healing, for their shifa. And also, my friends, remember those who departed and left us. How many people we had in this community in the previous Ramadan, the previous nights of Qadr, who were with us? Some of them were old, some of them were young. Some of them were men, some of them were women in our community, in our own community. They are no longer with us. Remember them, pray for them. Pray that God bestows forgiveness and mercy on them and maghfira on them, inshallah. My friends, the dua for the dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to come from a clean heart. What do I mean by the clean heart? A clean heart is the heart which has been mentioned in the Quran. The heart that does, that does not carry grudge. When a ma fi sudurihim min ghillin. God says the beautiful heart, the heart of the people of paradise, we take out the ghill. Ghill is a grudge, is hate, rancor. We take it out of their hearts. Why? Because when you put grudge in your heart and hate, the heart becomes an ailing heart. An ailing heart cannot function. Cannot function. An ailing heart, spiritually ailing, not physically, spiritually ailing heart, cannot send the message to God. Does not have enough energy, enough power to send the prayers and the message to God. So keep your heart clean. Try to love the people rather than hating them. Try to understand people. Try to accommodate people. Try to accommodate your family members. Keep jealousy out of your heart. And for that to happen, it's not enough once a year. It's not enough to go to the masjid and worship God once a year. This is a training process. This is a continuous process. Some people think that for God to accept me and forgive me, I'll go Laylatul Qadr. Only one year throughout 365 nights and days. But that is not enough. I tell you why it's not enough. Let me ask you this question. Can you find any student who never studies, who never revises, who never writes his or her homework, and then on the eve of the finals they want to study? Can they pass the, the final? Can they pass the exam? If they only study on that eve, Impossible, impossible. That doesn't happen. Even if they are genius, they have to study throughout the year. Another question I ask, someone who wants to be healthy and he eats junk food throughout the whole year, only one night he says, today, 24 hours, no junk food, no smoking. Would he be healthy? No, they tell him you have to eat healthy food every day. Every night, avoid smoking every day, every night. The same thing with dua, my friends. The same thing with relationship with God. Relationship with God, dua, and worshiping, and servitude, and ibadah is not once a year. If you think you can solve your problems, all your problems in one night, you are mistaken. You should reflect on this. You have to have a good relationship with God every night. Every night. Your voice has to be familiar there every single night. If we sleep out the whole night, we don't wake up, we don't worship, we don't recite dua, we don't pray, we don't say, oh God, I need you, then your voice would not be a familiar voice there. But if your voice is familiar, God would love it. God would recognize it immediately. This is, not, this is a hadith. This is not a fairy tale. Allah says to the malaika, listen to those that you recognize their voices. So the malaika recognizes the voices that are familiar when you raise them every night. But once a year, they will have hard time to recognize you. Try to maintain this relationship with God. We have a program every single day in this masjid, every single day, 365 days. The doors are open, sometimes during the days, sometimes during the nights. And there are other masajid, other houses of worship. Try to go, try to worship. God loves us to worship together. 
spirit of togetherness and unity. One of the objectives of Laylatul Qadr is to be united, is to sit next to each other, is to sit next to people, sometimes you don't know them, but you share the faith with them. They are the source of inspiration and empowerment for you. You can read the dua by yourself at home, which is also good. But when you go to the mosque, you sit with the brothers and sisters who share the same faith, same ideals, same principles with you. It will strengthen your faith, your trust in God. Worship with your family members. Please bring your children to the mosque. Bring your one, young ones. You have to encourage them. In this country, my friends, we risk losing our children. There are many temptations out there. Materialism in this culture is very strong, very influential, and very dangerous. You may risk losing your son and your daughter. If you don't have good relationship with them, if you don't have good friendship with them, if they don't journey with you to the mosque, then you risk losing them. Your children have to be with you when they are very young. If they get to the age of 14 and 14, that is too late. They would not listen to you. That age is very critical. If they are not familiar with you, if they do not establish the bond of a friendship with you from the age 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, then by the age of 14 and 15, they are not your children. They would not listen to you. It's too late. This is what I hear from many parents throughout the year. They come and they complain about their children. And I ask them, when did you start talking to him or her? They said when they are teenager. I say to them, this is too late. This is too late. You neglected them when they were young. You did not bring them. You did not accompany them. You did not introduce them, introduce them to the mosque, to the Quran, to the prayers, to the dua, to the Islamic culture, to the legacy of our imams, to the legacy of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam, to the legacy of Fatima al-Zahra. Now it is too late. It's too late. So try to bring your children. Let them be familiar with this atmosphere. Let them sit on the floor. Let them ask why we are here. Many of our children, they have good time. They have parties, weddings. They go to weddings, birthday parties, graduation parties. We give them money. We give them, at least, let's make a deal with them. That I want you during these nights, during the month of Ramadan, during the last nights, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, I want you to come to the mosque. I want you to listen. I want you to worship. Because this is good for you, not for me. It's good for you. A family cannot stay safe if part of it, only the parents worship, but the kids are corrupted, are lost. They know nothing about their Lord. They know nothing about their religion. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he prayed, he did not pray only for himself. He said, رَبِّ جْعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِ Enable me to establish the principles of prayers and my children too. My children too. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِ رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا If you enable me and my children to worship you, then you're going to accept our prayers. وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا In another verse, he says, رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا not just me being submissive to you. I'm, I want my son to be submissive. My grandson, my great-grandson, my great-granddaughter, my whole family. You would not enjoy this life if part of your family is not with you, if part of your family is missing from the radar, the spiritual radar. Some children, they live with you at home, they eat with you, but when it comes to prayers, when it comes to religious and moral commitment, they are far from you. It does not work. Encourage them. Encourage them. 
take them. As you take them to a restaurant on their birthday, take them to the masjid on these critical nights. These nights are critical. I mentioned two nights ago. We should not waste our time in these nights. These are nights of reflection. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say on Saturday night, inshallah ta'ala, if I live to that moment, I'm going to say on that night, the grand night of Qadr, what should we ask God on Laylatul Qadr? It's the night of asking. Ask God. But what should you ask him? There is a manner. There are priorities. If you know how to ask him and what to ask him, then you're going to be granted. These nights are important, my friends. The hadith says sometimes God gives children to some people, but they don't know how to handle them. So what is supposed to be a blessing from God, it turns to be what? A curse. This is exactly the wording, wording of the hadith. The hadith says, إن الله تعالى أنعم على قوم بالمواهب فلم يشكروه فصارت وبالا عليهم. God has bestowed gifts, beneficiaries, blessings, مواهب on certain individuals and families and communities فلم يشكروه. They were ungrateful. How they became ungrateful? One, they did not know how to handle their children, how to raise them, how to nurture them. They didn't know. They lost them. They did not know how to communicate with them. فصارت, these blessings, which was supposed to be blessings and gifts, فصارت وبالا. It turned into calamities, وبال, on that family, on that community. On the other hand, وابتلى قوما بالمصائب. God has tested some people with calamities, afflictions, فصبروا فكانت نعمة عليهم. They withstand these calamities. They were patient. They showed perseverance. Patience. They were successful. These calamities turn to be in the future blessings and success for them. And we have many examples of some people who suffered in the beginning. Some of them suffered from sickness. Some of them suffered from poverty, but then they turned to be great leaders. I know a family. When the mother got pregnant with her baby, she wanted to drop the baby, to have miscarriage. She wanted to abort the baby. She said, this baby is extra on the family. I can't handle him. Extra on our budget. But then some people talked to her. She kept the baby. She delivered the baby. The baby today is one of the greatest people in the country. One of the greatest source of inspiration and power and dignity for his nation. That baby where the mother did not want him. He was unwanted. See? When you know how to handle them and you become patient, things that you don't like become source of dignity and a pride for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Because we don't know about the consequences. Certain things we don't like them, but there is, there is dignity for us and salvation and success in these things. We don't like them. So not everything that you don't like, it means it's bad. Put your trust in God. Neither everything that you think it is good for you, it turns to be good. You never know. Put your trust in God. Sometimes God gives you things, you don't like them. But they are good. Sometimes God doesn't give you things. You think they are good for you, but they are not good for you. So try to work on your children. Let me say one thing before I turn to our hero tonight, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Believe me, if God gives you one billion dollars and he does not give you good children, he hasn't given you anything. And if God gives you one good daughter, one noble daughter, one noble son, and he gives you little money, God has given you everything in this life. This is the wording of the Quran. This is not me. This is what your Lord says in this book. 
Why? Because this one billion dollar, you can lose it any minute. When the heart stops, you lose all your money. But if your heart stops, you don't lose that noble son and that noble daughter. They're going to continue your legacy. They're going to continue your path. They're going to remind the community about their parents, about their fathers and mothers who raised them well. So be thankful to God. Those of you who have good children, every single day say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, praise to the Lord who has given me this daughter, this son, this grandson, this granddaughter. Be grateful to God. Al-Walad al-Salih. The Prophet says, when we die, everything is going to perish. Everything is going to be erased from our accounts. Except three, knowledge does not go away. Perpetual charity does not go away. Righteous children do not go away. They are an asset for you. The verse that I recited in the beginning, وَإِن يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَخْدَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهُ هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ this verse in Surah Al-Anfal is associated with the leader of tonight and every night. And that leader is the commander of the faithfuls, Asadullah Al-Ghalib, Al-Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam. God says in this verse, if the community, your community, Ya Rasulullah, they try to deceive you, وَإِنْ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يخدعوك, Then you are not alone. God has given you support. هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ God aided you. أَيَّدَكَ means, in English, means aided you with two things. What are these two things? One thing is God himself. بِنَصْرِهِ With his support. The second, وَبِلْ And the commentators, they say, بِلْ in this context is the leader of the Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam. Ali was indispensable to the Prophet, meaning the Prophet could not continue his journey without the help of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib is inseparable from the Prophet. And this is the testimony of our book. Anything I say here comes from this book. I do not invent. I don't invent. I, whatever I say has roots in this book. Look at chapter 3 to know the relationship of Ali to the Prophet. Wherever we celebrate Ali, at the same time we are celebrating the Prophet. Whenever we are prof celebrating Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are celebrating Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because both are inseparable. Why? The book says, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ Ali, نَفْسُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Ali, his soul is equal to the soul of the Prophet. He's equal. Ali is equal to the Prophet. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ The greatest Mufassir of the Holy Qur'an. Fakhruddin al-Razi. The greatest ever in the Sunni tradition. He says this ayah in Surah Al-Imran. It's a testimony that the soul of Ali is equal to the soul of the Prophet. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ So when we speak about Ali, we are speaking about his father-in-law and his first cousin, and his teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were inseparable. And this is why, my friends, Ali never was separated from the Prophet, always with him, like a shadow. Except one incident, where the Prophet wanted him to stay there, in Medina, and that is the Battle of Tabuk. The Prophet said, Ya Ali, there are many conspiracies against the Muslim state now. Against our society, Islamic society. No one can deter these conspiracies other than you. I want you to stay in town. Don't come with me. The Prophet left him there. And when he left him, 
he said the following statement hadith anta minni bi manzilati harun min musa illa annahu la nabiyya ba'd ali to me you are represent to me what aaron represented to to moses he was his successor his right hand his aid because musa says in the quran waj'al li waziran min ahli harun akhi ashdud bihi ashdud bihi azri wa ashrikhu fi amri kay nusabbihaka kathiran wa nadhkuraka kathiran musa said oh god i cannot continue my mission unless you designate my son harun to be my wazir my aid my senior aid i can't function i need this this brother with me the same thing prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam could not function without ali ibn abi talib ali was instrumental in the journey of islam all other companions are good but they were not instrumental they were replaceable if someone goes another 10 people come 50 people come and fill the gap alhamdulillah big numbers but ali nobody would fill the gap that ali leaves therefore the prophet needed him the prophet called on no companion there is no incident no single report where the prophet said oh i need fulan i need fulan bring me this bring me that never ever the only time the prophet mentioned a name and he said i need him bring him to me was the name of ali ibn abi talib In one of the incidents, Ali was severely sick. He could not walk. He could not raise his head from bed because he had eye infection. Eye infection, ramad in Arabic, ramad, eye infection. And he was in severe pain. And the Prophet kept saying, bring me Ali, bring him to my tent. They kept telling the Prophet, leave Ali alone. Ali is sick tonight. He said, bring me Ali. I need Ali ibn Abi Talib. So when they brought him, Ali was leaning. Ali, the hero on that night, was leaning on two people. He could not walk. He came to the Prophet. The Prophet put a saliva from his mouth on the eyes of Ali. They open immediately. And the pain goes away immediately. By the miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali was a leader. A caliph for four years and, and nine months. And the principles of his khilafah and his leadership were two. Number one, khilafah to Ali was an accountability before God. He is accountable before God. Today, someone who scores victory, someone who arrives to the office, he says, I'm accountable before my people, if he's a true. If he's genuine, the most he can say, I'm accountable and responsible before my people, those who elected me. Ali was not only accountable before people, but he was accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore he considered God always. In whatever he did, he would look at God. He did not want the Khilafah in the beginning. They forced him to accept the Khilafah because the Muslim Ummah was in disarray. He said, لَوْلَا حُضُورُ الْحَاضِرُ وَقِيَامُ الْحُجَّ بِوُجُودِ النَّاصِرُ وَمَا أَخَذَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ لَا يُقَارُوا عَلَىٰ كِضَّةِ ظَالِمٍ وَلَا سَغَبِ مَظْلُومٍ لَأَلْقَيْتُ حَبْلَهَا عَلَىٰ غَارِبِهَا وَلَسَقَيْتُ آخِرَهَا بِكَأْسِ أَوَّلِهَا وَلَا أَيْتُمْ لَأَلْفَيْتُمْ دُنْيَاكُمْ عِنْدِي أَزْهَدُ عِنْدِي مِنْ عَفْطَةِ Government is cheaper, cheaper to me in my eyes than the sneezing of a goat. How much is worth the sneezing of the goat? How much? Nothing in the desert. You hear thousands and millions of sneezing of the goat. It has no value. Ali was giving a parable example that this leadership, don't think I, am, I crave for it. Don't think that I have ambition political ambition Ali never had any political ambition Ali never had any dreams that he becomes a leader or a governor never ever 
When he accepted, he accepted just to serve, to serve, to be servant of the community. And he did serve, and he did protect his community. And I mentioned a few nights ago that Ali, the Khilafah took a toll on him. Everyone who comes to office, he would flourish while he's in the office. He will make profit. Even presidents in America and elsewhere, when they leave the office, they give one lecture, they charge $200,000 for a lecture. It's a lucrative job, even when they leave office. Ali, when he came to office, he became more poor, more deprived. Ali, when he died tonight on the eve of the 21st, and his bank account was only 700 dirham, he intended to purchase. He intended to bring a servant into his house to serve his family. 700 dirham in his bank account. A treasury that is filled with hundreds of thousands, could be millions of gold coins. Gold coins and silver coins. But Ali was not interested in that. Why? Because he's accountable before God. Always. And this is what he said to his children. Taqwallah. Taqwallah. We have to remember God. Always. The second principle of his khilafah is Ali... As a governor, as a caliph, was a teacher at the same time. Nurturer, mentor. Ali said the khilafah and the leadership, it's a means, it's a mean to change the people, to transform them, to bring happiness into their life, to make them more human being, more God conscious, more aware of the society around them, more responsible, more committed. Terbiya, it's a means of terbiya. Today, the office, it's not a means of terbiya, believe me. It's not. This is why when a bad president comes to power, not only he corrupts politics, not only he corrupts the economy, he, cor he corrupts the social life, and as a result of a bad president in the office, we're going to have a rise in the rate of divorce and the family dismantlement. Because the manners of the, prof of, of the president influences the people. The president, the caliph, the leader, is supposed to be a symbol of integrity and honesty. He should not lie. He should not cheat. He should be honest. He should, he should stand to his promises. He should put the country before himself and his company and his corporations. So when the people, why in some countries people are bad? You know why? This is the prophet. The prophet says in some countries people are bad. They cheat. They are dishonest because their leaders are cheaters and dishonest. This is the hadith of the prophet. If you want people to change, you have to change the political establishment. A corrupt political establishment breeds corrupt society, influences the society. Why? Because people look at the president, the prime minister, the leader. What does he say? What does he do? If there is contradiction in, in his sayings and his deeds, people learn from him or her. But if the president is an honest person, he would definitely influence his community. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Presidency and Khilafah is an office to teach and educate and nurture, not just to lead and govern. It's not about dominance. It's about how you treat the people. This is why Amir al muminin he wrote to one of his governors, an important governor. And in fact, he was his chief, chief justice, the chief justice during the time of Imam Ali. This is the highest judge in the nation. He said to him, listen, when you go to the court, when you sit on the bench, you have to do the following. He said to him, Wasi bayna al muslimin biwajhika wa mantiqika wa majlisik. Equalize between the people who come to the court, between the plaintiff and the defendants. When they come to the court, equalize, treat them equally. Treat them with equality, never discriminate. 
بوجهك when you face one one time face the second one time too if you face one three times face the second one three times too when you turn your face always be just بوجهك ومنطقك if you address one of them one time you have to address the second one time too بوجهك ومنطقك ومجلسك the way you sit do not favor one of them above the other don't do that don't discriminate be very just be very sensitive why حتى لا يطمع قريبك في حيفك when someone is related to you he would not have hope in favoritism and nepotism and in bias or injustice he should not have that hope ولا ييأس عدوك من عدلك even someone who does not like the judge he's your enemy he comes to your court he would still believe that you treat him justly even though he's your enemy tell me my friends where do you find this what su supreme court what judiciary system what government you find the president speak to the chief justice like that the way Ali ibn Abi Talib speaks to his chief justice where where do you find it what country what culture other than the school of Ali ibn Abi Talib Ali is unique. Ali is unique. Ali says justice is not when you treat your friends good. Justice is when you treat your enemy good. This is justice. Otherwise your friend is your friend. Definitely you have to treat them good. But once you reach that stage, you rise above your soul and your temptations and your desires, and you, you, you treat your enemy well with justice, that is real justice. That is justice. You do not abuse your enemy. This is Ali. And this is why we miss Ali. And this is why we need a person like Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, in our societies. Ali left a legacy. His legacy were not towers. He did not build towers. Ali lived at his time when he was caliph. He lived in a small cottage. Small cottage. He built the cottage himself. He built it. There was a palace for him in Kufa. Kufa is an ancient city. And before Ali ibn Abi Talib, there were many, many, many governors before him who lived there. And they built a magnific magnificent palace in Kufa. If you go to today, if you happen to go to Masjid al-Kufa, the Grand Mosque, look to the, next to the mosque, there, is, there are an area which is filled with ruin, ruins in that area. That is the Grand Palace of Kufa. When he arrived in Kufa, they said, this is your seat here. This is the seat of the government. Amir al-Mumineen said, never I would even enter this place. He built can you imagine the leader? He built a house for himself with his children, helping him. He built a small cottage, very small house, very humble. Next to that palace, he never entered Qasrul Imara. The name of that palace was Qasrul Imara, the palace of the government, Qasrul Imara. He never entered that palace, never ever. He built a house for himself and the house is still stand. And imagine, subhanAllah, the palace which should stand for 5,000 years now, the palace is completely demolished. Qasr al-Imara, which was, which was a cottage made of clay and mud, still stand today and people go and pay tribute to it. This is a miracle. Because this house was based on justice and love. That one, the palace was based on tyranny and aggression. And God says, if you want your house to last, you know what he says in this book? أَفَمَنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى تَقْوًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانِ عَلَى تَقْوًا مِنَ اللَّهِ If you want your house to last, then build your house based on piety and justice. And this is exactly what Ali did. The legacy of Ali are not towers and buildings. The legacy of Ali are values and principles. This is why we mourn Ali. This is why we love Ali. This is why we wish that Ali would enlist us with him as servants 
as followers. Assalamu alayka ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Assalamu alayka ya Sayyid al Wasiyin. This is why Ali, tonight his house is dark. This is small cottage, which is very small, very tiny. It's not big. This house is dark tonight. His children are surrounding his deathbed. The first son, Imam Hassan, 37 years old. The second son, Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein was crying very hard. And every time Amir al Mu'mineen opens his eyes because he was overwhelmed with the pain, the poison of the sword of Ibn Muljam, the poison spread, spreads to his entire body and his body becomes very sick. So he would go unconscious. And when he opens his eyes, he realizes that there is a headband, a sab, headband on his head. He turns to his children, he says, children, who, who put this for me? Nobody answers. The second time, children, who did this for me? The third time, the voice of Hussein came. He said, Ana ya Abba. I did this. He said, Hussein, Waladi Hussein, you feel sorry for me? Who's going to put a headband on your head in Karbala, in the desert of Karbala on the day of Ashura? Who's going to be there standing next to you, trying to save you? Very sad night tonight. The house of Ali, this little house of Kufa. His children are around him. But Ali is still inducing them with inspiration, with wasaya, with goodwill, with good statements. Ali was not telling them, my children, I'm in pain, please help me, save me. He never said that. He never. You know what he was thinking about Ali? You know what Ali السلام, was thinking about tonight? Every now and then, he turns to his son, Hassan السلام, He says, Hassan, Hassan, akrimu asirakum. Akrimu, be good to the Asir Ibn Muljam because they kept him in the room. They handcuffed him after he murdered Amir al Mu'mineen. They put him in the next room. Amir al Mu'mineen says to his son, Bunayya Hassan, bihaqqi alayk, for all the favor I did for you, all the right I have upon you, please, illa ma tayyabtum mat'amahu wa mashraba. Give him good food, give him good drink, good drink. Tonight they brought some drink to Amir al Mu'mineen. He took a sip and then he, he said, take the rest. ila asirikum. Take the rest of this drink to him. Don't make him feel thirsty or hungry. Take care of him. This is Ali. This is the heart of Ali. A heart that can encompass the whole world, the whole dunya. Great heart. Because Ali was looking for the Akhirah. His final destination was Akhirah. Tilka darul Akhirah. Naj'aluha lilladheena la yuriduna uluwan fil ard. Wala fasada. So they gathered around his deathbed. He said, أُوصِيكُمَا بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَلُزُومِ أَمْرِهِ أُوصِيكُمَا بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَلُزُومِ أَمْرِهِ وَأَنْ لَا تَبْغَيَ الدُّنْيَا وَإِنْ بَغَتْكُمَا وَلَا تَأْسَفَا عَلَى شَيْءٍ مِنْهَا زُوِيَ عَنْكُمَا وَقُولَا لِلْحَقِّ وَعْمَلَا لِلْآخِرَةِ وَكُونَا لِلظَّالِمِ خَصْمًا وَلِلْمَظْلُومِ عَوْنًا Always put the Akhirah in front of you. Do not be worried about the dunya. If you miss something about the dunya, do not freak out. Do not even be sad for the dunya because you have to work for the Akhirah. This is not your final destination. This is not your final termination. You are not meant, you are not designed to stay here. You have been designed just to pass. You come from one door, you leave it from the other door. So don't be sad if you miss something material in this life. Don't be sad for it. Always, when someone is abuser, someone who insults, someone who practices injustice and aggression, stand in his face. If you 
can do nothing, at least use your mouth, your statement. At least raise your opposition to that tyrant by saying something. Don't remain silent. If someone is mazlum in the community, if someone is abused, don't look at his or her identity and religion and race and color. Rush to their help. If someone says, oh, save me, rush to their help. Organize your life. Your life, your masjid, your community, your house, your office should not be in disarray. Organize it. Organize your life. If you want to make it successfully to the hereafter, take care of this life. Let it be organized. Organize your family. Allah, Allah, bil salat. Imam Ali was admonishing his children and through his children to us. This is a message of Imam Ali on his last night, this worldly night. Allah, Allah, bil jiran. Take care of your neighbors. Respect your neighbors. Let your neighbors enjoy your residence among them. Let them say, we have good neighbor. We have a thoughtful neighbor in our neighborhood. Allah, Allah, bil jiran. There are many orphans in our communities, in our countries, back home, here. Try to sponsor some orphans. Try to bring them some happiness, some relief, some cure, some education, some clothing, some food, some medicine. Allah, Allah, bil salat. As salat. Do not forget your prayers. Your prayers is what connects you with God. Allah, Allah, bil Quran. Do not abandon this book. Try to read this book. Reflect on this book. And then after that, he said, Bunaya Hassan, soon I am going to leave you. Soon. If, if this happens, Bunaya Hassan, you do the ghusl and the shroud and the kafan, and then you pray on my body. And then after that, I want you to carry me. The angels are going to carry my coffin and walk to the destination. You're going to reach a grave site. When you remove the dirt from there, you're going to see a plaque written there. Hada maddakharahu Nuhun al-Nabi li Ali ibn Abi Talib wasiyya Rasulillahi qabla al-Tufan. Before the great flood, Nuh himself, he prepared this resting site. This is a grave site for the successor to the Prophet for Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam. When we arrive there, put me inside my grave, Ya Hassan. Soon after that, while Amir al muminin was speaking to his family, his daughter Zainab is standing there. This is very difficult. Few days before, few years before she lost her, Grandfather, the Prophet, she lost her mother, Fatima, alayhi salam, and now she is losing her defender, her protector, Amir al Mu'mineen. She was standing on Kulthum, the rest of the children, the family members, Amir al Mu'mineen looked forward and he said, Assalamu alaykum ya malaikata rabbi. He greeted the angels of death who came for his reception. And then he said, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For this life, for this destiny, for this paradise, let's people work hard. وَغَمَّضَ عَيْنَيْهِ وَمَدَّ رِجْلَيْهِ وَتَشَهَّدَ الشَّهَادَتَيْنِ He said the two testimonies, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and his life, his soul departed his body. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. 
فتضج أملاك السماء لموته اليوم مات الأنبياء جميعا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين